trying to make history. Route 66, obviously, probably the most famous road in America, but um, 66 to us is, the, you know, every team, at least in the SEC, has got 22 swimmers or divers. Um, and so 22 times three is 66. We got 66 opportunities to score, to make history. And so I, I, the, the team really embraced the Route 66. I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Joining us today is a very special guest. He's coming to us with a short pod, but it's a very, very important interview. It's one that has to happen right now. This man is legend. This man is a stud. His life is defined by grit. He was my Olympic roommate in 1988. He's a distance man. He, he, has, he had the record for the swim portion of the Ironman set it back in 1995 and held it for nearly 25 years. Of course, we're talking about University of Kentucky head coach, Lars Jorgensen, and the man who's won the SEC team title. What's up, buddy? Nah, not too much. Good to see you. I mean, you, you know, I, we had a call yesterday, and it was, it was nice to talk to you and to check in with you. And, uh, and I'm thinking back over your life, and it's like everything that I've ever witnessed about you, it's, it can be defined as just heart. And, uh, and, and, and that's what you described as, uh, you know, for the SEC championship, the, the title this year, it's, um, you know, the, the, if we're being honest, it's a, you know, not all universities have the same assets and, and uh, the same history. You're building that in Kentucky. Um, did you know this was coming? Did you, did you always have this in the, in the back of your head and, and a timeline for it? Well, um, yeah, I mean, kind of, um, I knew it'd take a little while from where we were like initially, but, um, you know, just really number one, kind of, uh, established the culture many years ago, trying to do the, you know, the right things the right way, um, in, improve the kids that we had on the team. And then also obviously you start to recruit some better athletes and, and you do that over a couple of years, you start to have a pretty good team. Um, but yeah, th I mean, this team in particular was, um, so gritty all year, um, determined, um, you know, um, they're just a, a wonderful group to coach. Um, lucky that we have them. They, they bought into our culture and everything that we do. And, uh, you know, it came out this weekend in, in uh, full force. All oh, yours, Coleman. I need you to nerd this up. <laughs> um, let's give our listeners a few numbers. The final scores, Kentucky scored 1,124 points. Florida was in second, 1,071. So 53, you, you guys won by 53 points. Um, did, coming into this meet, did you think you guys had a shot at this? Yeah, um, we did. Um, you know, it really started about a year ago when we had the most returning points. Uh, and, and I think that kind of motivated the team. Um, no, nobody gave us a real chance, though, because um, we don't, like Mel was saying, we don't have a great history necessarily of, of, you know, tradition. People think of, you know, the Floridas and the Georgias of the world, at least in the SEC, probably. Um, so um, we like that, though. Um, we, you know, we, we took that pers perspective and, you uh, and the girls didn't really listen to outside chatter too much. They thought they could win more importantly than whether the coaches do or not. Um, we have a, a great staff that really kind of pushed them along, but um, ultimately it's about them. It's their team. Um, and I tell them all the time and, and they took ownership over the team. Um, it was their team all year long. And, you know, we as a staff just kind of helped guide them along. But um, that was the greatest thing. Uh, and, and our leadership was outstanding. Um, I don't care what sport you are. Um, you know, if you're a football, basketball, volleyball team, if you don't have great leadership among your team, you're not going to be very successful. So um, the leaders on our team, from our from our captains to the people on our leadership council to our seniors, all played a huge role in, in developing that mindset that we could win. You know, he, he said something. He said that, uh, you know, you, you came in with most returning points, but no one was really giving you the respect. And, yeah. uh, and I, so I have a lot of, phone calls in the background with coaches and people, you know, do you have 
10, 20, 30 year relationships with. And they're like, come on, Mel, what's, what's going on? And they're talking about coverage for their team and how often we're covering the teams. And sometimes it's, it feels critical and it feels critical on story after story after story. And it's, uh, and, and I remember you, you called me a while ago and you, Hey man, I, th- I think this is a little bit, you know, like, come on. And I was like, I reviewed it and I was like, yeah, I'm kind of thinking that too. Let me, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It seems, it seems a bit much, but at the same, it's, I think most coaches out there and athletes in college swimming know. And um, so that's something you experience as a head coach and you're hypersensitive to it. How do you manage moments like that? How do you manage it when you're like, the world is not telling me, telling us we're great. Oh, I, I think that's uh, the underdog mentality is, is a huge motivator, you know, and uh, little old Kentucky. Um, that's something that we bought into all year and uh, um, is extremely motivational. You know what I mean? Um, and, and again, I think the, the girls, you know, really bought into that um, philosophy. And um, the coolest thing we did all year is just trying to create history. We've never been done at Kentucky uh, in the best conference um, and, you know, people will say, well, there's not a dominant team in our league right now on the women's side, which is probably fair. But um, if you look at the top 24, in our league compared to any other conference, we're still the toughest and the deepest conference in the country. Um, and so for us to win in the SEC during the pandemic as well, um, I think gives a lot of uh, kudos to our girls staying healthy all year, doing the right things and uh so it's, it's even almost more special to win, you know, during, you know, every team had struggles this year. There's no question and we had our own, but like they kept overcoming things. And, and that was evident just this weekend, you know. Coleman, I don't know about you, but I think there should be a special trophy for, for coaches who come in, 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 in like Lars's situation. And then in their eighth year, they pop an SEC championship. What do you, what do you think? I mean, there's, there should be like an asterisk a little. What, what, how do you feel about that? I mean, it's it's just crazy because coming in to this meet, to the season, to this meet, like you said, Kentucky didn't have like you don't have stars. There's not a standout team right now. There, I think every a lot of teams, especially in the SEC, lost a lot of their big stars last year. Tennessee certainly did. I mean, you you guys certainly did, right? Yep. You lost Asia Sight and Allie Gallier, like two of your two of the most. Uh, decorated Kentucky swimmers in history, I'm pretty sure. Um, but you know, so it's like, there weren't really many stars. And like you said, I feel like that played into that underdog mentality. Um, yeah. It, well, you know, at the, com- at, at the conference level, it's all about depth. Um, every single person in our team scored, um, which is huge. Um, and, uh, and so, um, yeah, but people like uh, Asia and Ali and many of our alumni, um, were a big part of that because they kept building the program, getting better and better. And, uh, but the, you know, it, it was our depth. It was developing kids that, you know, aren't five-star recruits and making them pretty good and, and having some special people really pop off. I mean, Lauren pools for a three, four Diane was outstanding. Jillian Davey, Riley Gaines, tuner free. Um, yeah, we don't have any like household names, but, um, collectively we're pretty good and, and we're deep and, and it's, um, And I was really proud of that because, you know, at the NC2A level, like you need some superstars and relays and stuff. But um, at the conference, it's much more about the overall team and the development and getting as many people like in the B finals as possible. That that scores a lot of points. And so I thought we did a pretty good job of that. Mel, do you have something? I do have something. I just, I just know, you know, in seeing coaches that go from one conference championship to the other, I actually like the combined. I understand what's going on this year, but it's, uh, it just seems like coaches are wrung out. You're, we, we've got a short period of time with you because you got to get back to work, buddy. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, we're, and, and also you've been battling sickness, haven't you? Yeah. My, I came down with COVID a little bit and, um, uh, well, um, but overcame it pretty good. Uh, thankfully, I'm blessed it wasn't too bad for me. But um, but yeah, um, I think every team dealt with that obviously all year. Our, our kids as well. And uh, but again, it just kind of goes back to um, I think our, our grittiness and resilience. And um, you know, if there was somebody that was sick or out for a little bit, you know, the next person stepped up. Uh, you know, I think that's the big thing about our team and our team mentality is uh, 
okay, you know, next person ready to go, you know? University of Kentucky, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful campus. Um, and I, but I, I know that this in college, it's, it's the game of recruiting. It's, it's, the, it's, it's convincing people, hey, I've got you for four years and your life's going to be better after you leave this campus. Um, how do you feel in terms of your recruiting going into next year? How does this, you know, after this championship, how are you feeling, buddy? Yeah, it feels um, it feels great. I, hopefully, it will help um, you know with recruiting a little bit. And like I said, we don't typically get the the top flight kids, but we got a lot of really really good kids that we develop. And uh, um, yeah, hopefully, it will help recruit and maybe get a you know a few more of the you know maybe the headline kids in high school. But I but I think for us, it's also about being who we are. In, in us, it, our program is about development and. Uh, we try to find people that, you know, still have something left in the tank. Um, and, uh, and we want them to get better over four years. If they do that, I think you have a better team and the, and the kids are happier as well. Um, so, you know, we want their best year to be senior year. Um, and, uh, like our seniors were really good this year. Um, and they, you know, they keep getting better. And so I, I think that's a testament to our culture and, uh, you know, our whole coaching staff that does a, a really amazing job with everybody. Would, are you Lars? Are you someone who plays the numbers game at, at, at a meet like this? And if so, was there a moment where you were like, "I, I think we're going to win"? Well, uh, the the key day for us was the middle day. The hundreds of stroke, four hundred IM was really good. Um, two hundred free cell. Like for us, we had to move because I think we we're third or fourth. I don't know, fifth maybe. But I knew we weren't too far behind. It's one thing. <laughs> really matter what place you are but how far behind are you mm -hmm. and we were always kind of in the hunt and uh but um the middle day was huge for us um the hundreds of strokes again the 400 i am tuner free was was really good um had, had a very good uh um four by 100 medley relay and that gave us a shot on the last day our, our best day was our last day um you know we talk about finishing all the time and and you know the girls were put themselves in a position to finish on saturday and they did I, mean, I don't know about you, but, you know, we, we do have these private conversations. I have them with Tiff here at Swim Swam. And it's like, where would you live? You know, if you live in Austin, where would you live? And, uh, and, and Lexington, Lexington is on the list. It's a, it's a cool place. Um, are, is, this, is this home, buddy? Are you there forever? Are, are you going to be poached away at the University of Texas or Stanford? Uh, or, you know? <laughs> no, it is. I love Lexington. Like you said, it's, it's a kind of a great – it's a big college town, really. Uh, I mean, it's not a small college town – you know, like in Athens, Georgia, for example, but um, it's a great mix of a college environment and kind of a city as well. Um, you know, it's, uh, I really enjoy it. Um, our, our administration is awesome. Our, our, AD, our AD was down there last night. He jumped in the water with us, Mitch Barnhart. Um, and so if you got the support from the administration um, and uh, the community as well, Lexington and, and being in the SEC, uh, um, it's a great place to be. So I, I love being at UK. We promised. You, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead no, you're on. good. No, we, we we promised you would be about 15 minutes because you 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 you're you're, you're still working. You're still in the, in the thick of it. Um, I was going to ask you for any parting thoughts, unless Coleman had a final question. Well, I mean, I, I would like to know maybe just in a couple minutes. Um, you know, how, how your team seasoned through uh, COVID this year. Right. Because we've gotten everyone's perspective on it and everyone's situation is different. Um, yep. And, you know, it's like you you guys came out and, and you, you wrecked it. You, you won the SEC title. And what did you guys have to go through in terms of um, changing and evolving this season? Well, a lot. Um, no, it wasn't a normal year for anybody and I, for any college athlete at any school. But, um, you know, we, we literally our number one team goal when we started this in the summer, August was to stay healthy. And that was I'd write the weekly goals up for the team. And number one was always stay healthy. I, I knew if we stayed healthy and we did for the most part, um, we had a chance. And so that was always our goal. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of the classes are, you know, hybrid classes online. You know, you, you go to the weight room, you're wearing a mask, um, weekly testing. Um, as from a coaching perspective, I was nervous every single week we would test on Monday or Tuesday and, you know, our trainer would send the results and, you know, I was on pins and needles every single week. And so were our athletes, you know, like, okay, did I pass? Did I pass? And so, 
Uh, I think the uh, the mental part as well was a grind this year in, in terms of dealing with COVID. Um, on top of you know just being an SEC athlete is a grind in itself, and I think um, you know coupled that with with COVID and all the other stuff that we had to go through. Um, and again, I, I think it was our, our team that really kind of bought into trying to win and make history um, in a testament to our to our team culture and, uh, you know, really kind of building that up over years. And um, I think those things kind of allowed us to handle the adversity and what we knew there'd be adversity all year. But there's there's always adversities every year is magnified, obviously, with COVID this year. But um, you know, I just, I, I thought we handled it pretty well. It wasn't perfect, but, um, um, I think we all just can't wait to go back to normalcy, hopefully soon for everybody, but, um, but it is what it is. You know, we got to stay safe and do the best that we can. We've been asking you to come on, on the pod forever and you had to win an SEC championship for us to get you, buddy. Are you, are you going to, are, are we going to have to wait, you know, months and months and months to talk to you again? Or are you going to come back on and talk to us? <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe when, if we win an NC to a title, that'll be a few years, but I don't know. Yeah. But, um, I appreciate you having me on today and, uh, sharing our story with, um, like I said, I couldn't be more proud of our team. Um, the fact that everybody stepped up and, uh, you know, it was, it was a, it was a total team effort. And that, that, that's the thing that I love about college swimming. It's all about the team, you know, Olympic trials is awesome. You know, like that's the highlight in our sport, you know, being in Omaha, but that's, you know, an individual thing. Right. And, uh, you know, this is all about the team. And uh, that's my favorite thing about college coaching. It's about the team and doing it for something bigger than yourself, doing it for the university of Kentucky. I have to ask this question. There's not, there, it feels, you know, it, it big conference championships it's an epic battle it's uh there's usually a moment when when things shift and you are you know it's over and you're like we got this or you feel really confident that you've got this uh when was that moment for you and what was that feeling like um i would say um after the tuner butterfly on, on saturday morning um um we had two a finals we had a girl trinity ward who stepped up um who's you know, doesn't always love the tuner fly, but she scored in the C final, did really well. Our tuner breaststrokers were awesome. I think that was the, the key. Um, we went three A finals in the tuner breast. Um, Lauren Poole, Jillian Davy, Billy Bonnet, and then also like Anna Havens Rice and, and uh, Jackie Hill as a senior did an awesome job for us. So at that point, I was still nervous. We had to get through finals in the 1650. Florida is really good at the mile. I think they had seven people in the mile. So I, I was still a little bit nervous, but I felt pretty good after prelims. Um, and I'm like, we got to get through the 1650 and then, you know, do well at night. And, they, and we were fantastic at night. They just really kept stepping up, um, kind of going back to what Coleman was talking about. But like on that on that middle day uh, on Friday at the evening session, it was like we kept winning heats and we, we you know, it was we'd win the C final or the B final and it really created momentum. And so, um, you know, these meets, as you know, Mel, are all, a lot of it's momentum, right? And so we got the ball rolling, ball never stopped rolling. And, and that was key for us. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.